I get a lot of questions about using probiotics, so in this video I'm going to help you understand the right circumstances when it's appropriate to use some probiotics, and when it is time to use it, how to use them the right way. How do I do it? When do I do it? What am I doing? Let's jump in. C. Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So when we're talking about supplementing with probiotics, we're, we're trying to set up good gut flora in this large intestine here. We don't really want a lot of bacteria in the stomach or the small intestine. We really want the good gut flora in this large intestine. That's where they're really beneficial and help a lot of functions work a, a whole lot better. So the circumstances in which we might want to use some probiotics to replenish this good gut flora, well, the first circumstance could be some diarrhea. Maybe you had a diarrhea episode, you got some butt soup, it shoots you off the toilet like a rocket. Well, that's a circumstance where you could probably use some probiotics because that diarrhea shooting through the system can really fry all this gut flora. And there's a lot of people that feel like this appendix here is kind of set up that when we have a diarrhea episode, maybe we get a food poisoning situation or something like that, and we kind of fry a lot of these beneficial bacteria, this little kind of doohickey here, the appendix, is supposed to be like a starter kit for that good gut flora and it can just come back out and then kind of set up camp. So there's a lot of people that feel like that's the circumstance going on when we have diarrhea that kind of can have the ability to eliminate a lot of that good gut flora. So that can be an appropriate time to use some probiotics. Maybe uh, after a food poisoning, that can be good because these good gut flora here kind of police the situation. And if you know you got some bad guys coming in, they're going to probably move further down and want to set up camp here and raise their kids and have a keg party and create all kinds of havoc. So that can be a good time to use some probiotics. Uh, after antibiotics, we hear a lot about this. And I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling anybody whether they should use or not use antibiotics. But I'll put some links in the description below this video for some studies that indicate that there can be some issues that after using antibiotics, where you basically take this medication that's going to wipe out all these bad bacteria that you're trying to kill. You got some kind of infection that's creating trouble, we're gonna take antibiotics to wipe them out. Well, it appears that they also wipe out your good gut flora. And so the studies that you're gonna look at below kind of indicate that it seems that there's a higher risk for like candida and other yeast and fungal type issues that can come about after using antibiotics and a lot of people feel like that's because you wiped out your police and these good gut flora are here to police this situation and keep all the bad guys in check so when you get rid of them now there's no police so that can be a good time to take some probiotics is after you've used some antibiotics and also after antimicrobials, you know, it's just a natural form of something that's going to, especially if it's something that's going to wipe out bad guys in the digestive tract. Maybe you're dealing with some SIBO issues or maybe an H. pylori issue in the stomach and you're trying to wipe out some of these bad guys. Well, after you do that is a good time to use some probiotics. And I really like to see people do that after they've taken these steps to wipe out the bad guys. And there's a couple reasons. The, the main thing is that when you put in probiotics, if you have an overgrowth here of a lot of bad guys, well, you're basically gonna create this war between the good guys and the bad guys, and it can create a lot of discomfort and cramping and just a person feeling lousy and really magnify some symptoms. So they'll take probiotics and they'll be like, oh, I feel awful, these things are not right for me, I'm not doing that again. But the reality is that you just needed to get this under control a little bit so that you could then put the probiotics in and they can set up camp and not create such a huge amount of havoc. And you'll see a lot of studies of, of people saying, oh, you should take these probiotics while you're using antimicrobials or even while you're using antibiotics. And I just don't feel like that's really that beneficial. Like I wouldn't throw puppies into a volcano. I don't see the benefit from that. So if you're gonna be taking steps to wipe out everything in there, I just feel like it's probably more beneficial to wait till you're done with that and then use the probiotics or maybe start them towards the end of that cycle of whatever it is that you're doing. Another circumstance can be if you feel like you're dealing with a leaky gut and a leaky gut issue can be these junctions here in the lining of the intestinal tract are supposed to be tight so that all these bad guys and undigested food particles can't get in and get into the bloodstream because when they do that, 
then the, the, the body says, oh, that's not what's supposed to be there. That must be an invader, and I'm going to go to war against a peanut butter sandwich that just wasn't digested and got through because these junctions were too wide with this leaky gut situation. So I'll put some links in the description below for some studies that indicate that using probiotics seem to have the ability to tighten up these junctions for a lot of people and improve that circumstance. So that can be a circumstance where uh, probiotics can be beneficial. And if you want to understand the leaky gut thing a little bit more, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on understanding leaky gut and steps you can take with that. Also food sensitivities, if somebody's dealing with food sensitivities, a lot of times that can have to do with that leaky gut situation. And if you can take some probiotics to tighten up those junctions, then that can be a beneficial time to do that. So those are some circumstances here, but when it comes to the timing and how do I use these probiotics, we really like to see people take them on an empty stomach, away from food. So you don't have all of your digestive acids going on in your stomach. We really should have digestive acid there that helps us break down our food. We don't want that acid frying all the probiotics as well. So some people feel like there's some strains that can get through that but we just like to see people take it away from all of that activity and it seems to work a lot better. So maybe right when you wake up before you've eaten anything, maybe just before you go to bed, if it's been you know a couple hours since you've eaten, those seem to be more beneficial times to take that. And we like to see people take it, like I mentioned before, if they're just dealing with light d digestive symptoms maybe. We don't want them having severe digestive symptoms because that can be a sign of things going wrong and things have gone awry and maybe we need to fix some digestive malfunctions, maybe we need to, we need to reduce some overgrowth issues going on and then putting in the probiotics isn't gonna create such a magnification of symptoms and can be more beneficial. And it seems that using them for about three months seems to be the route that's good for a lot of people. And a lot of the studies that talk about the leaky gut, it seems to say that, yeah, about three months is when people really start seeing improvements here. And I used to tell people, you know, if, if this terrain is set up okay, just using them for three to four weeks is probably enough to get them set up and allow them to start replicating. But a lot of these studies are indicating that some people do a little better using them a little bit longer. I don't feel like you need to use probiotics indefinitely like a lot of people say. If this is set up, they should thrive and then maybe you just use them occasionally. And also people ask a lot about should I use prebiotics with it? And prebiotics just include these kind of insoluble fibers that help to feed these beneficial bacteria. So when you can take those with the probiotics, you're not only putting them in there, but you're like giving them lunch and getting them set up to really thrive. And we use that. The, the probiotics that we use include prebiotics as well. And I'll put a link to them in the description below just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not suggesting that you use this brand. I'm not saying that this brand is going to correct every health issue you've ever had. I just know people are gonna ask me what we use and so I'll, I'll let you see what we're using. But one situation is that it might be problematic if you're dealing with a SIBO issue, like a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, to use probiotics with some prebiotics in there because that can feed those bad guys as well. And there's some circumstances where it can be okay and some where it might not. So if you wanna understand that a little bit better, you can jump over right now and check out our video on should I use prebiotics with SIBO. Hope that helps.